In this video, we'll look at a simple way to find the vertical asymptotes for a tangent graph simply by using the equation and some knowledge of horizontal transformations and the parent graph y equals tangent. So all you have to do in this method is apply the horizontal transformations to the vertical asymptotes of the parent graph. So those are the inputs of your general tangent equation. So that's the bx minus c. And then we'll set that equal to pi over 2 plus pi k, the asymptotes of tan x. And after that, all you have to do is solve for x. Uh, do note that k is an integer, so we will get an equation that generates all the asymptotes for our tangent graph. And we should know that tangent graphs are periodic, which means they simply repeat over and over again. And that means we have infinitely many vertical asymptotes. So all you have to do to find those is substitute in different integers for k. So for example, you can let k equal 0, or 1, or 2. And by doing that, you'll get different vertical asymptotes in your tangent graph. All right, so let's look at an example and get more comfortable with how this works. So say we want to find the asymptotes for this equation, y equals negative 2 tan of 1 half x minus pi over 2 plus 1. So all we have to do is identify our horizontal transformations. So we have both a shift and a horizontal stretch going on here. Um, so all we have to do is take those and set them equal to pi over 2 plus pi k. So let's do that now. We have 1 half x minus pi over 2. And we will set that equal to pi over 2 plus pi k. And remember, k is an integer, so that term pi k kind of stands alone. It's going to be uh, unlike any other term that we have. All right, so if we're looking at this equation and we want to isolate x, we first should start by multiplying both sides of this equation by 2. Or if you want to think about it as dividing by 1 half, you can do that as well. Okay, I'd prefer to just say multiply everything by 2 and then multiply this whole thing by 2. All right, so on the left side, we have 2 times 1 half, so that cancels out, and we're left with x minus pi over 2. And then on the right side, we have pi over 2 times 2, so pi, and then we have pi k times 2, so that's plus 2 pi k. All right, and now to isolate x, we just need to add pi over 2 to both sides. And this is what I was talking about, the k term. You can't really add or subtract anything to it unless it also has a k. So when we add pi over 2 to both sides, we only can add pi over 2 to the pi term. Okay, those are like terms. So on the left side, we have x equal, or we have x by itself. We have equals pi plus pi over 2. If you want to rewrite that pi as 2 pi over 2, you can. And you see we get 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. Okay, uh, one thing to double check, your plus something k term should always be equal to your period. So if you've already found your period, you can do a quick double check there. Um, but that's just nice to see. So let's try substituting in different values for k, just to make sure we understand how to use this asymptote generating equation. Okay, let's first start by letting k equal to zero. That's probably the easiest. So all we do is substitute in 0 for k into our equation. So we have x equals 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi times 0, which of course makes that term go to 0. And we're left with just 3 pi over 2. So we have a vertical asymptote for this graph at 3 pi over 2. OK, let's try letting k equal to 1. And what's neat about this is this will give us the asymptote just one cycle to the right of the k equals 0 asymptote. Okay, it's 2 pi away from its previous one. Okay, but we can just substitute in 1 for k. So we have 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi times 1. Okay, of course, you may want to rewrite. So you have a common denominator. So 2 pi becomes 4 pi over 2. Okay, add those two terms together, and you see you have a second asymptote at 7 pi over 2. And notice it is pi apart from the previous one. OK, let's try letting k be negative 1. Because of course, k can be negative values as well. k 
Okay, is any integer? All right. So we have our equation to generate asymptotes. X equals 3 pi over 2. This time we have plus 2 pi times negative 1. Make that look a little nicer. Negative 1. Okay, so rewrite with a common denominator. We have negative 4 pi over 2 to replace that negative 2 pi. So we have 3 pi over 2 minus 4 pi over 2. So we should have another asymptote at x equals negative pi over 2. So notice that is to the left of the k equals 0 asymptote right here by exactly the period 2 pi because we know an asymptote happens exactly once a period. Okay, so let's just take a look at a sketch of this equation and see that what we found here is exactly what happens. Okay, so notice that we have the asymptotes here. So we have the k equals 0 asymptote. That was at 3 pi over 2. k equals 1 asymptote. We said 7 pi over 2. And k equals negative 1 was the negative pi over 2. So notice they go in a pattern. We have the k equals 1, k, excuse me, k equals 0, k equals 1. You could imagine that you'd have k equals 2. If you kept going to the right, you would have another asymptote that was 2 pi away from 7 pi over 2. Um, we had k equals negative 1 here, k equals negative 2. And so we didn't actually substitute in negative 2, but hopefully you get the feel for how this works and how the asymptote equation will generate any asymptote uh, that you could want on the graph. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped you feel more confident about finding the vertical asymptotes of tangent graphs. Uh, check out the links in the video description. There are more examples of this, examples of how to graph tangent graphs, and even of how to graph uh, some of the other trig functions.